day and somehow on my porch it's a hotter day <laughs> who knows every day is a good day when you take the time to pray you take the time to be still you take the opportunity to regroup refocus and to put it bluntly to be still and know your God because not only does the Father want and desire more than what Jesus said to know what's even better to walk with us so that we would understand that he loves us so much that Jesus could not communicate it as much as he wanted to as expressly as he kept saying to his disciples the Father has loved you the Father has loved you and yet if you listen to what we share and what we care about it's always Jesus <laughs> You ever notice that a Jew is always praying to God, the Father? <laughs> somehow all the Gentiles are always praying to Jesus. I don't know if that's significant or not, but somehow in between we need to get a grasp on it's not the Holy Spirit that we worship. It's not the gifts we're given that we exalt. But it is Jesus to the glory of God the Father. So there's a balance there. We need to remember and recognize that the Father... Even though if, as we've seen Jesus, we have seen the Father. The Father delights to spend time with us. So at some point in time, I'll challenge you to do what I did once. And I don't think I'll ever do it again. But in my ignorance as a joyful, spirit-filled, bouncing, bubbling, beautiful little baby Christian, I was bouncing around, you know, just loving Jesus and praying and talking and carrying on. And... One day I was laying on my couch, you know, and I was telling the Lord about how much I loved him and how wonderful it was. And then the thought crossed my mind and I thought, but God, I said, I don't understand the difference between Jesus and the Father. I said, I don't understand, you know, the Holy Spirit and, and I know that's different, you know, and I, I feel like Jesus is my brother, but I don't feel like, God, you've really revealed yourself to me. So I asked him, <laughs> God, I said, Father show me yourself you know now it's true the scripture has said no man has seen god at any time but god can bring you close enough to teach you what the fear of the lord is <laughs> and it's not what you think but take some time today get alone get real get quiet get still and then talk to god your father and see if he might not have a unusual experience for you to participate in today I think you may be surprised with the results. I know I was, <laughs> and I'll never forget that moment. Or hour. <laughs> uh, prove me now. Streams in the desert, Malachi 3.10. What is God saying here but this? My child, I still have windows in heaven. They are yet in service, but both slide as easily as of old. The hinges have not grown rusty. I would rather fling them open and pour forth than keep them shut and hold them back. I opened them for Moses and the sea parted. I opened them for Joshua and the Jordan rolled back. I opened them for Gideon and the hosts fled. I will open them for you if you will only let me. On this side of the windows, heaven is the same rich storehouse as of old. The fountains and streams still overflow. The treasure rooms are still bursting with gifts. The lack is not on my side, it is on yours. I am waiting. Prove me now. Fulfill the conditions on your part. Give me a chance. I can never forget my mother's very briefest paraphrase of Malachi 3.10. The verse begins, Bring ye the whole tithe in, and it ends with, I will pour out. The blessings out till you be embarrassed for space. Her paraphrase was this, Give all he asks and take all he promises. I like that. The ability of God is beyond our prayers, beyond our largest prayers. I have been thinking of some of the petitions that have entered into my supplication innumerable times. What have I asked for? I have asked for a cupful and the oceans remain. I have asked for a sunbeam and the sun abides. My best asking falls immeasurably short of my father's giving. It is beyond that we ask. Jesus said, You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. 
when I was told that I could have all the gifts of the Spirit, I said, okay, I want them all. And I didn't treat it as being something that, you know, you had to have a certain, quote unquote, this new modern terminology, which is not scriptural, a certain gifting. There's no such thing as a gifting because it says that the Holy Spirit gives good gifts as he severally as he chooses. And we were taught in the book of Acts that if you wanted to really kind of like detail it all out, you see many gifts all operating at the same time within any given circumstance or situation. So in reality, I was told that any good gift God would give. So why deny having any of them? Ask for all of them. <laughs> so in my ignorance, I did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't feel like I lack any of them. <laughs> and by golly, I have had to exercise every single one of them at some point in time in my life. Thank God he took me up on my ignorance and my innocency in order to bless me with the ability to turn those who have such narrow focus on what God is doing back to God so that he could re invigorate them to a broader perspective of what God is doing in the lives and hearts of people today as well as in their own life because so often when people get carried away on a gift or get carried away on a ministry or get carried away on one focus of one thing they become less temperate and more tempered by being angry easily at the things that don't go according to their narrow way of thinking now it's true that the way of salvation is narrow but in the ministry, there's a wide variety of what God is doing in the hearts and minds of people. And it's for him to determine where and how and to direct us daily, sometimes moment by moment, lest we get in the way of God and hinder the work that he's begun in the hearts of one of his children. Because you see, God loves the person. And too often, the people of God think the person is the problem when the problem may be back in the mirror a long time ago, when somehow the focus got taken off of the giver, God himself, and became the gift, the ministry they think they have. Sadly, you may find yourself in that position. Maybe you are. If you would move into the body of Christ as opposed to the fingernail or hangnail, then you might find that there is a great wealth of God moving by the power of his own determination in the hearts and minds of people throughout the world today. So sometimes you just need to open your eyes and realize God, not man, is in control. God, not governments, directs. And God is bringing us through this time, which is the end of the world, to a place where he is only and solely our salvation so turn your eyes in case you haven't figured this coming back unto jesus and let him tell you what to do <laughs>